Good yantiv, shana tova. The new year is supposed to offer us renewal, a chance to turn the page, to start afresh. It's been a long time since we have collectively needed a new year to begin, as much as we need the new year of 5781. We want to turn the page to be able to look back on 5780 as quickly as we can. Yet the wisdom of nearly every religious tradition and spiritual practice teaches us that we must feel present in our current circumstances, be present in the moment before we can look forward. This morning, I hope to do exactly that, to help us stand present in this moment, to acknowledge both its challenge and its beauty and grace, and then to look forward to the year to come with a sense of hope, optimism, and inspiration. Now, Rosh Hashanah is about renewal. In the prayer, Hayom Harat Olam, which we'll sing soon, Ah, Hayom Harat Olam, right? We know that. We sing, today is the birthday of the world. And in this prayer, we ask if we stand before God, Kevanim or Keavadim? Do we stand before God as God's children or as God's servants? And when we seek God's protection, when we want the wing of God protecting us and shielding us, that is when we are like God's children. When we are inspired to take action, to make change and improvement in the world, then we are like God's servants. Yet because of our collective experience this year, I think we need a third category. This year, we have been put through the ringer. Heck, you know, that's, I can't even use the past tense. It's like we're halfway in the middle of the ringer, right? We're still going through it, each of us in different ways. And when we stand before God, perhaps having lost a loved one, perhaps having lost a job or an opportunity, and as a community, when we stand before God, unable to celebrate the B'nai Mitzvah of our children, unable to comfort each other with Shiva Minyanin, and unable to say goodbye to our loved ones collectively in funerals the way we normally would. Given those realities, we stand before God with the third category. I would add Kesovlim as God's sufferers. We stand here anxious and impatient. We are anxious about what the future will bring. As this epidemic ebbs and flows, we have so many questions. When will it finally come to an end? How? What will our future look like? How will this impact all of our plans that we've made for the years to come? Now we are impatient to return to a semblance of normalcy, yet we know that that moment is not yet at hand. And today, in the midst of all of this, we are blessed to have this Rosh Hashanah at its normal time, with its structure to give us meaning amidst the chaos. We might want to say, Ma Yafa Yerushatenu, how wondrous, how beautiful is our inheritance when we have this beautiful Rosh Hashanah to guide us these days. Now, Rosh Hashanah arrives every year just on time. My, one of my rabbis I work with like to say that. It doesn't come early or it co doesn't come late. It comes right on time on the first of Elul. Sorry, the first of Tishrei. Now, we welcome Rosh Hashanah with candles and with Kiddush. And especially poignant this year with the words of a blessing that many of us know quite well, the Shehechianu. This year, we especially need the words of the Shehechianu to help us look back upon the year of 5780 and appreciate God for granting us life, for sustaining us, and bringing us to this very moment. With this blessing, we mark gratefully that we have all survived that we are here together in this unique digital space 
celebrating another new year with our Beth David family. So please, wherever you are, join me right now in standing as we say this blessing to express our appreciation for the grace, the love, and support that have made it possible for us to be here present as a community and as individuals. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekiamanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazeh Thank you. you. may be seated. <laughs> now these words have tremendous emotional power because we've said them so many times in such wonderful circumstances. They bring with them the power of those moments as well. They actually have even more power than that, though. More power than we usually consider. These three words, Shehechianu, Kiamanu, and Higianu, can also guide us as we move forward. Now, I don't suggest we say the blessing every day, because that would be robbing it, probably, of its power and impact. However, we can use these three words and say them with me. We can use Shehechianu, Ikiamanu and Higianu as daily reminders to be present in the moment, to take good care of ourselves, and to rise up to the challenges of the moment, and to be inspired to still continue to make plans for the future. Shehechianu, we are present in the moment. Now, just as it was important that we recognize our presence today together with this blessing, it will be important that we find ways each day to be present in the moments to come. Going forward, we can use the word shehechianu to remind ourselves to be present in the moment. Because staying present in the moment can help us do so many things. It can help us fight anxiety. And it can help us mark time as we progress through this pandemic, which has felt and will continue to feel almost too incremental to measure. And when we face setbacks, as we inevitably will, Shehechianu will remind us that we have dug out of the hole before and we will dig out again. We will say Shehechianu every morning to remember that we are alive. We are here. We are present right now. Now, Kiamanu is all about how we sustain ourselves through this time, giving ourselves what we need. It answers the question, what gets us through? We might think of this as self-care. And we should begin by being kind to ourselves, to treat ourselves with understanding. In particular, we would be wise to have reasonable expectations of our own productivity and the productivity of our loved ones and those close to us. Now, good self-care is critical because it's hard to stretch and grow from a position of distress. Yet, if our only self-care is to treat ourselves with kid gloves, then we risk our self-care becoming just self-indulgence. Kiamanu also requires that we continue to challenge ourselves to grow and develop spiritually, emotionally, and intellectually each and every day. Each day of life is a tremendous blessing and gift and we are charged to use it for its fulfillest purpose, for its most full purpose, to bring forth our higher ideals and our beliefs. We do not get a pass on our essential responsibilities to self, to God, and community because of the pandemic. Kiamanu is a balancing act between these two mindsets, one comforting and the other challenging, the two being partners in helping us move forward with meaning and purpose. For me, I want to share with you what has been Kiamanu for the past six months. And that is our daily menu. Every day at 545 or maybe 541, I start the Zoom stream. And I see slowly face after face come up on our screen, sometimes 15 devices, sometimes 20, sometimes 25. Get a few minutes to see your faces and to hear your voices, to say hello, and to see how things are doing. And this is truly a great comfort. 
immense comfort. And then after that comforting moment, we turn to the words of the Siddur, the prayer book. And as always, they challenge me to live up to our essential values like kindness and wisdom and righteousness. We are meant to encounter these words and be changed by them because we don't pray to change the world, we pray to change ourselves for the better. So being present in the moment, shehachiyanu, and finding comfort and inspiration in our spiritual tradition, kiyamanu, give us two ways to care for ourselves day by day. As you may have guessed, we need a third element. We can only fully captain our ships, so to speak, when we are navigating toward a destination on the horizon. This is the final leg of our three-port blessing, Higiyan. Now, one of Judaism's greatest gifts to us, or the greatest, greatest contributions to our lives, is giving us landmarks in time by which we guard, guide our lives. Looking backwards, we might ask ourselves, was it three Pesachs ago or four that little Rachel read the four questions for the first time? Looking forward, we might buy a new dress or keep guard over a brisket in the freezer, saving them to enjoy on Rosh Hashanah. Higiyanu is about creating opportunities to look forward beyond today and tomorrow to give us hope, a time to look forward to. Judaism is so dedicated to this approach to life that we named the days of the week as they build up to Shabbat. Today is Yom HaShabbat, along with Yom HaZikaron. Tomorrow is Yom HaRishon, the first day. Not the first day of you know, an endless journey, the first day of six days leading up to Shabbat. Right? Then Yom Sheni on Monday, Yom Shlishi on Tuesday. We keep counting up and up to the next Shabbat. Because each week, our tradition offers us an amazing opportunity to look forward to one day, Shabbat. Seize it. Plan for it. Make it special. Make it a day that you look forward to. The most fundamental and important element of Shabbat is that it is here every week. Now some weeks feel so long that last Shabbat might feel as far away as last Rosh Hashanah. And at the end of that type of week, it is a day to rest and recover with friends and family. Now, Shabbat is the brilliant secret masquerading in full sight. And in this, and in this, type of pandem and in this time of pandemic, Shabbat is a wonderful destination to look forward to each week. We need rest and refreshment and the, and the knowledge that Shabbat will not let us down. It comes every seven days with steadfast predictability. And week by week, week by week, Shabbat will help us navigate through the challenging waters that surely lie ahead in the new year. So right now, as we look forward with hope and resolve to the year 5781, these three steps, and please say them again with me, Shehechianu, Kiamanu, and Higianu, can help us get there in one piece. Remember each day to appreciate what you have made it through, Shehechianu and then to do proper self-care, kiyamanu, and then look forward to the next generation, the next destination of Shabbat or holiday to come, higiyan. Take a moment with these three words each day, and together we will make it through this year to come. Now next Rosh Hashanah, next Rosh Hashanah, might seem very far away, but it will come. And next year, Next year, we will be celebrating the new year of 5782 together behind these walls in our new beautiful sanctuary. And on that day, we will stand together and having guided us through this time, we will say these words again. Shehechianu, the Kiamanu, the Higianu, Lazman Hazed. Shana Tovah.